Dorland. I'm a, a full professor in this department, one of, one of five. Uh, I've uh, been here for 24 years, something like that. Something like that. Uh, I teach rhetoric, semiotics, discourse. In my work and research, whether it's uh, in sort of cultural policy questions or comparative legal questions, or more recently uh, in, in Cadaverland, uh, Holocaust survival is dealing very centrally with the problems, you know, um, either way of expression. What, who are you when you've come out of a concentration camp? You don't know who you are anymore. Uh, you've been sort of, you know, brutally, uh, you, okay, maybe it's a miracle you've survived, but you've been brutally abused and so forth, and then how, how, how are you going to come to terms with this? How do, does, you know, the society you live in come to terms with this? How do the so-called helping professions come to terms with this? Such Jewishness as I have is, is from my mother, who, um, well, grew up in a very assimilated context in, in, in Paris, and then the Nazis came along and suddenly they were turned into Jews, okay? And, you know, a uh, considerable number were deported, and, and, and she, she wasn't. Uh, her family was reasonably spared, but, you know, still. Uh, as a result of which, she was in a state of sort of pretty much complete denial until close to when she died about being Jewish and what it means. Silence can be a form of communication just as much, okay? So that if you're, you know, someone is not speaking, okay, the point of things like psychoanalysis and so forth is to, to take the affect out of the symptom, okay, and express it in words. So on some level, it's been tied up with war, propaganda, and you know, and such from from the get-go. This is just continuing uh, an aspect that you know hasn't been. Working.